Well, 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 look at you going back, looking at the early episodes or listening. I don't know if you look or listen or do both. Whatever you're doing, I appreciate it. Listen, this is my little warning. Hi, I'm Robin O'Neill, by the way. This is me reading stuff. These early episodes are slightly problematic. I'm leaving them up with this warning to you that I didn't have this banging hip-hop track. I didn't have a $40 microphone in the early days. It was just me in a jean jacket on my bathroom floor. Things have changed in six months. So thank you for being understanding about the clumsiness of these initial episodes. Keep tuning in. Subscribe on iTunes. And all I ask of you now is to go do something you like. Take a walk, drink some coffee, get drunk. Whatever it is that you need to do, go do it. I give you permission. Goodbye. All right. Hey, guys. Jesus, I just sounded like I was ready to party here at 7 a.m. on a Monday. Nothing could be further from the truth. Ever, really. There's never a time I want to party. I hate parties. I really do. I always have. So if you're thinking of inviting me to your party, and let's face it, it's obvious you were probably going to, just don't. I didn't even go to parties in high school. And I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I was invited to parties in high school, even the cooler ones. But I preferred staying home with my mom and dad on Friday nights. Religiously, we'd go pick up Wendy's in the drive-thru, and we would go home and watch TGIF. And... I would say like once every two months, my dad would go, when we were done, he would kind of look at me and go, hey, Robbie, how's about you go make me some brownies? (laughs) And then I would make him brownies. Uh, And then in college, my roommates had to pay me to go to parties with them. And uh, one time, I remember they paid me in Sprite. I guess I was really into Sprite at that time. Another time, potatoes. (laughs) That's right, I wanted a bag of russet potatoes. Anyway, yeah, I don't like parties. No matter how amped up and energetic I sound sometimes, I'm a one-on-one kind of gal, so just invite me to coffee. Oh, except I had to give up coffee this week because life's miserable and my body hates me. You guys have heard me talk about how much I love coffee, so you can imagine how I'm feeling right now. So I guess forget it. Things just aren't going to work out for us. We're not going to parties. We're not going to coffee. But it is good to be here with you guys today reading to you. Uh, sharing the things I love. Today, I'm going to read you a short story by Margaret Atwood, and this is called Happy Endings. John and Mary meet. What happens next? If you want a happy ending, try A. A. John and Mary fall in love and get married. They both have worthwhile and remunerative jobs, which they find stimulating and challenging. They buy a charming house. Real estate values go up. Eventually, when they can afford live-in help, they have two children to whom they are devoted. The children turn out well. John and Mary have a stimulating and challenging sex life and worthwhile friends. They go on fun vacations together. They retire. They both have hobbies, which they find stimulating and challenging. Eventually, they die. This is the end of the story. B. Mary falls in love with John, but John doesn't fall in love with Mary. He merely uses her body for selfish pleasure and ego gratification of a tepid kind. He comes to her apartment twice a week, and she cooks him dinner. You'll notice that he doesn't even consider her worth the price of a dinner out. And after he's eaten dinner, he fucks her, and after that, he falls asleep while she does the dishes so he won't think she's untidy, having all those dirty dishes lying around, and puts on fresh lipstick so she'll look good when he wakes up. But when he wakes up, he doesn't even notice. He puts on his socks and his shorts and his pants and his shirt and his tie and his shoes, the reverse order from the one in which he took them off. He doesn't take off Mary's clothes. She takes them off herself. She acts as if she's dying for it every time. Not because she likes sex exactly. She doesn't. But she wants John to think she does, because if they do it often enough, surely he'll get used to her. He'll come to depend on her, and they'll get married. But John goes out the door with hardly so much as a good night. And three days later, he turns up at 6 o'clock, and they do the whole thing over again. Mary gets run down. Crying is bad for your face. Everyone knows that, and so does Mary, but she can't stop. People at work notice. Her friends tell her John is a rat a pig, a dog. He isn't good enough for her, but she can't believe it. Inside John, she thinks, is another John, who is much nicer. 
This other John will emerge like a butterfly from a cocoon, a jack from a box, a pit from a prune, if the first John is only squeezed enough. One evening, John complains about the food. He has never complained about her food before. Mary is hurt. Her friends tell her they've seen him in a restaurant with another woman whose name is Madge. It's not even Madge that finally gets to Mary. It's the restaurant. John has never taken Mary to a restaurant. Mary collects all the sleeping pills and aspirins she can find and takes them and a half a bottle of sherry. You can see what kind of woman she is by the fact that it's not even whiskey. She leaves a note for John. She hopes he'll discover her and get her to the hospital in time and repent, and then they can get married. But this fails to happen, and she dies. John marries Madge, and everything continues as in A. C. John, who is an older man, falls in love with Mary, and Mary, who is only 22, feels sorry for him because he's worried about his hair falling out. She sleeps with him, even though she's not in love with him. She met him at work. She's in love with someone else called James, who's 22 also, and not yet ready to settle down. John, on the contrary, settled down long ago. This is what is bothering him. John has a steady, respectable job and is getting ahead in his field. But Mary isn't impressed by him. She's impressed by James, who has a motorcycle and a fabulous record collection. But James is often away on his motorcycle, being free. Freedom isn't the same for girls. So in the meantime, Mary spends Thursday evenings with John. Thursdays are the only days John can get away. John is married to a woman called Madge, and they have two children, a charming house which they bought just before the real estate values went up, and hobbies which they find stimulating and challenging when they have the time. John tells Mary how important she is to him, but of course he can't leave his wife because a commitment is a commitment. He goes on about this more than is necessary, and Mary finds it boring, but older men can keep it up longer, so on the whole she has a fairly good time. One day, James breezes in on his motorcycle with some top-grade California hybrid, and James and Mary get higher than you'd believe possible, and they climbed into bed. Everything becomes very underwater, but along comes John, who has a key to Mary's apartment. He finds them stoned and entwined. He's hardly in any position to be jealous, considering Madge, but nevertheless, he's overcome with despair. Finally, he's middle-aged. In two years, he'll be as bald as an egg, and he can't stand it. He purchases a handgun, saying he needs it for target practice. This is the thin part of the plot, but it can be dealt with later. And shoots the two of them and himself. Madge, after a suitable period of mourning, marries an understanding man called Fred, and everything continues as in A, but under different names. D. Fred and Madge have no problems. They get along exceptionally well and are good at working out any little difficulties that may arise. But their charming house is by the seashore, and one day a giant tidal wave approaches. Real estate values go down. The rest of the story is about what caused the tidal wave and how they escaped from it. They do, though thousands drown, but Fred and Madge are virtuous and grateful and continue as in A. E. Yes, but Fred has a bad heart. The rest of the story is about how kind and understanding they both are until Fred dies. Then Madge devotes herself to charity work until the end of A. If you like, it can be Madge, Cancer, Guilty and Confused, and Bird Watching. F. If you think this is all too bourgeois, make John a revolutionary and marry a counter-espionage agent and see how far that gets you. Remember, this is Canada. You'll still end up with A, though in between you may get a lustful, brawling saga of passionate involvement, a chronicle of our times, sort of. You'll have to face it. The endings are the same, however you slice it. Don't be deluded by any other endings. They're all fake, either deliberately fake with malicious intent to deceive or just motivated by excess optimism, if not by downright sentimentality. The only authentic ending is the one provided here. John and Mary die. John and Mary die. John and Mary die. So much for endings. Beginnings are always more fun. True connoisseurs, however, are known to favor the stretch in between, since it's the hardest to do anything with. That's about all that can be said for plots, which anyway are just one thing after another, a what and a what and a what. Now try how and why. 
Well, thanks for spending some time with me, you guys. Please subscribe to this podcast if you haven't already. If you got some enjoyment, I'd appreciate if you could rate me on iTunes. If you didn't and you have a bone to pick with me, all right, email me at mereadingstuff at icloud.com. As always, I'll be patiently awaiting your presence over on Instagram and or Twitter. My handle is Robin, R-O-B-Y-N underscore O-N-E-I-L. And uh, this week, I'm going to be doing a midweek special, either Tuesday or Wednesday, where I read to you one of my entries into the Channing Tatum E.E. Cummings Erotic Poetry Contest. You guys only have a week left. So please apply if you want to win a special care package from me, including a drawing by me, a special drawing I'm going to make just for you. Uh, I'm, I'm off to do yoga. You are off to do something special and life-affirming, I am sure. So I will see you guys soon. Take care.